And let me put it like our East Indian brothers and sisters will now put it. Let us move forward, my dear friends. Let us move forward as one people with one objective in one cause, the betterment of the lives of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And the best vehicle for doing that is the People's National Movement. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. And it shall prevail. God bless you. Patrick Manning turned out to be an unanticipated giant. But when he got that, uh, nobody expected him. He rose to the occasion and he performed. He has left a tremendous legacy. He was relatively young. He was a young, fairly young person. He had been brought into politics by Williams after the 1970 Black Power Movement. Manning's task really was to rebuild the party. The social hardships that were created, the political split with Pandey inside the NAR, created a formula in which Manning was able to let the Balize bloom, which was the slogan that they used. The Balize was blooming again. A prime minister could only come from the elected people. He became the political leader in opposition of the party because he was in the House. And then, after the NAR's defeat, the PNM had the votes. And he was the leader, and he found himself to be the prime minister. His vision for national development you, you know, some people are, are managers, other people are visionary leaders, and I think you need a combination of those both skills to, to really be elite, to be someone that is truly um, great in terms of leading an organization or a people, but also being able to achieve a, a vision. Well, I, I would describe my father as a hard-working family man and people person. It was very, always very people-oriented, and he had a love for the people of this country. He grew up in Coquia Village in San Fernando. He, his wife is Hazel Manning. He had two sons, Brian and David Manning. He attended Presentation College San Fernando. He attended the University of the West Indies. He was on the Mona campus, studied geology in Jamaica, and of course, that's where he met several other Caribbean leaders while he was there, especially Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who's one of his, uh, I would say, one of his best friends. He genuinely loved the people of his country, and he genuinely loved politics. Um, he had friends on both sides of the aisle, in, in every political party, in every demographic. Um, he, he loved people. And I think being able to improve the lives of so many, there's no other profession in Trinidad and Tobago like politics that gives you the opportunity to really help people live better lives. We have one thing in common, all of us are here because we subscribe to the aims and objectives and aspirations of the People's National Movement. It brings together people of all races, people of all classes, people from different cultural backgrounds and social strains, all my dear friends, under the umbrella of the People's National Movement. Welcome. Uh, he wasn't very much into sport so much. He was more into music and uh, more into people. He would read, he loved uh, planes. He would listen to a lot of music, especially Joey Lewis, who I think is one of his favorites. I, I mean, I know Joey Lewis songs, you know, that uh, enough songs to last me a lifetime, um, very much into music, uh, and also socializing, that was really his thing. He is well known for his vision, he was a visionary, he's a person who really put a lot of things in place that, you know, that took people I think years to catch up to understand exactly what the plan was. My father and I would speak almost every day, um, you know, he was for the most part my best friend, especially as an adult, when he became more of a friend, of, became more of a friend than a father. You know, we would speak every day about national development and I understood where he was going and what he wanted to do. He did really have an inexhaustible love for the people of this country and also a feeling that we could achieve anything that we put our minds to. Um, he saw us as a developed country, a country with strong institutions that would promote equity within our society and also one that could be a world leader in the energy sector and provide um, 
you know, higher per capita incomes for all our people while also creating opportunities in other fields. Social security, uh, safety blanket, a lot of those things were done um, to really protect some of the, the more vulnerable people within our society and it came in uh, effective and, hand, and very handy during the COVID crisis. Transforming our economy from an oil to gas economy is also one that has saved us from severe financial hardship. The development of the HSF has also left a lasting mark on Trinidad and Tobago in terms of, of smoothing our economy and protecting us from uh, downward ec economic spirals. He served for so long, he left such an indelible mark on this country in terms of its legislation, in terms of the way we operate. It's difficult to remember what things were like before. And even if you think about um, floating our currency, that, that was one of the initiatives that he um, brought into being. Uh, free education, uh, I think, was an extremely important one. The people of Trinidad and Tobago haven't yet seen the kind of life that he envisioned for this country, but it is something that can be achieved.